Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be creating some direct to paper distress ideas using the brand new limited edition holiday card kit from Simon Says Stamp. Every year, Simon Says Stamp has some amazing holiday limited edition kits. And I am going to be creating a fun shaker card as well as some gift tags today in the video and kind of showing you more of a detailed project with the stamped card and the shaker element and the coloring and all of that good stuff. But then for the tags, I'm going to show you how to take some pre-mades and really dress them up very, very easily for some quick and easy tag ideas that can either be decor, strung together for garland, used as gift tags, used as ornaments, all of that good stuff. There is so much in this kit, but I am going to start by coloring in this beautiful Feathered Friends image from the Feathered Friends 6x8 clear stamp set with some Olo markers. These are alcohol ink markers. I will link the colors that I am using down below if you're interested. They are going to be a lot like your Copic markers. So if you are already using an alcohol ink marker, you will um, see that they're pretty similar. I am just giving these a try. I'm borrowing them from a friend and I want to see if I like them. And I have to say, you guys, uh, it's been a long time since I've had new markers. I don't know if it's just that they're new or that because they're a different kind of alcohol ink marker, um, they just glide on so smoothly. I also don't know if it's the paper. I will tell you that my friend who works for this company very highly recommends using the Express Blending cardstock. And I did pick some up. It is recommended for Copics as well, but I've never really used it. I've always had good luck with the Nina. Um, oh my goodness it's like butter. It's it's like that moment I had when I was coloring with zigs on Bristol and I realized I actually do love those markers. So I, I definitely think that makes a difference. I am uh, doing a little bit of layering here because I want my pears to have that lighter image. So this is kind of a partridge in a pear tree themed card. Super um, I'd say non-traditional, but I suppose the partridge in a pear tree is traditional, but I'm going with greens for my card. There is not going to be a lick of red on this card design. Um, and I was very, very much influenced by the pattern paper included in the kit. So we are using papers uh, from the kit. I think this is the Craft Consortium Tis the Season, if I am not mistaken. Um, and very much more what I would call elegant. So I wanted kind of that orange-ish orange highlight. And then for my partridge in a pear tree, I will be completely upfront with you and say, I went on Google, I did a search and I found an image I liked and I kind of just replicated that. Um, it had some beautiful blue green colors and browns and I thought that would be so beautiful with the green cardstock and the the pattern paper with all the blacks and the greens that I want to use for my card and so that's kind of the direction I went. Uh, I was limited by the markers which I don't know if that was really such a bad thing. Um, I, I didn't have all of them that are in the collection to work with. And so I really just kind of made do with what I had. I know I mentioned a lot of times you guys ask me, you know, what Copic markers to start with or, or things of that nature. And truly it's just start with a few and work your way into a collection. Um, you can generally make almost anything work. I did try to use a different color combination for my greens. I did oversaturate my paper just a tiny bit. That goes back to my um, not having brand new markers in a while and forgetting that if you oversaturate the paper, it'll bleed outside the lines. It wasn't bad enough to have me redo the coloring or anything to that effect. Um, I made it work. Now, I did not have the coordinating dies for this image when I was working with the kit. The dies don't come in the kit. I believe they are a separate purchase. However, of course, I filmed this and everything before the kit goes on sale. I'm just going by past kits from Simon Says Stamp and generally they release a coordinating die set. I will tell you I did use my brother's scan and cut to scan and cut this image. It literally cut 
so good. Um, so if you're interested in looking for one of those, I do recommend, um, you know, Black Friday is coming. Hopefully there'll be some good sales. If, if I happen to see any, I will let you guys know on social media or even here on my YouTube community page. It is handy. Sometimes you might get a, a stamp set that doesn't have the coordinating dies for everything or whatnot, and it does come in handy, or you just simply don't want to purchase the dies for every single set, whatever the case may be. I find it comes in very handy when I don't have the coordinating dies, or if I want to stamp a ton of the same image and die cut them all at once, I absolutely love using the scan and cut for that. All of the marker colors will be listed down in the description below the video here on YouTube, as well as over on my blog, right underneath the photo, I will have them listed out so you can check that out. There will be a link to my blog post as well um, in the description bo box as always. So lots of coloring. Now I did leave the coloring in Everything is sped up because we don't wanna be here as long as it actually took me to create the card. But I have heard from a lot of you guys to please not speed up the coloring too much. So I did try to keep the coloring um, more of a, a little bit slowed down. There will be some more sped up sections in this video uh, when there's a lot of repetition maybe a little bit later I know when I'm inking up tags and things like that and I've already shown how to do it I will speed that up a little bit but I hope you find this helpful to keep it more at a little bit slower speed remember you can always slow down or speed up the video something new I learned uh, from my YouTube you you guys I learned from you guys uh, on YouTube you can speed it up or slow it down I would probably recommend uh, turning your sound down so I don't sound uh, crazy, but definitely keep that in mind. Now I did use a little bit of like some orangish or orangish reds for the beak and around the eye. The eye just never worked really well for me. I'm gonna leave it for now. I don't wanna oversaturate it with those reds, um, but I'm gonna come back with a brown and go right over the top. But I'm loving how my partridge in a pear tree is coming out really worked out good. I am going to go in with a very, very light yellow for like the little uh, flower bud there, flower buds on the pear tree or the, you know, the fruit buds. And then I'm going to go in with a brown and I'm just going to kind of um, give them some dimension so that they're not so, so one dimensional. Really love these markers. Um, in case anybody's wondering, very much enjoying coloring with them. Grateful to Lori for letting me borrow them and, and try them out and see what I want. I will be ordering some. Uh, just, I know some of you have asked. I will be ordering some. I will probably be using them, kind of interspersing them into some of my other videos. So for those that have them and whatnot, and maybe if you're just looking for a good alcohol ink marker, Lori will be coming on my YouTube channel on one of my Friday lives here soon before the end of the year. And she is going to demo and kind of tell you all of the good things about um, Olo markers. So I will definitely be letting you guys know when that's going to be because she knows all of the good details and can answer everyone's questions. All right, um, my flower buds, a little one dimensional. Um, I did also feel like my bird needed just a little more of the flicking and the feathering. Just going back in, really just playing with the markers. That's one of my favorite things about Copic markers is that you can go over an image multiple times without any pilling of the paper. And then here is, I guess it's a yellow, I called it brown, but it's a yellow, It's I used it for the bird. Um, and we're just gonna kind of feather in just a tiny little touch on those little flower buds. Now off camera, I will be uh, going and die cutting this. And I did take a white jelly roll pen and add detail to my bird. And I feel like that really just kind of took it up another notch as well. So there's gonna be some highlights on the pears, the leaves, some little dots on the birds, a little highlight on the bird's beak, little things like that. And this is a white jelly roll pen. It's one of my favorite. I use a couple of different brands, uh, but I've used this for a very long time. I will have it linked in the description below. Pretty much like every six months or so, I just buy new pens. 
um, because I use them so, so very often. And I do black and white because I use them all the time for everything. And I, in fact, I will be using the black Jelly Roll pen for the eye on our little partridge, but it will be, I think after, I think I did that after I die cut. You could do it before with the scan and cut, but I've been in the habit when I'm using a regular die cutting machine, I do not add the black to any eyes until after I've die cut because I feel like it smashes it a little bit. So um, generally I just wait till I'm finished die cutting. Okay, so now I'm back with my die cut piece. It has the great little white border, so it very much just looks like you've die cut it with a steel rule die or uh, one of these framelit type dies. And then I'm going to take these domed arches from Simon Says Stamp. This is something from my stash. I cut down a piece of the green cardstock included in the kit. This is, um, let's see, meadow green cardstock. Is this a new color for Simon? Maybe I don't know. Uh, but I cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I cut down my pattern paper to a little bit smaller than that. And you'll see why in a little bit. But I cut the domed arch from that piece. And now I am going to take a piece, the piece of acetate also from the kit. And I'm gonna cut that down to fit behind my window, like a scant smaller than A2. So a scant smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And then I'm going to just kind of lay it back behind my window for a minute while I kind of plan out my next steps, I guess I want to say. You're gonna get two greetings die cut greetings, new dies in this kit. So you're gonna be getting the fancy happy holidays and fancy, fancy tidings of cheer. I've die cut tidings of cheer. This is some of that beautiful new white um, velvet cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I absolutely love it. The texture is incredible. So I die cut tidings of cheer once from that and then twice from some of the white cardstock in the kit. You will notice in my any of the kit videos that are becoming here, uh, especially these, well, the monthly kit always, but also these limited edition kits, I'm going to try to focus mostly on using things from the kit, maybe pulling in things like the domed arch basic dies and things that I might already have. But so far, the cardstock, the um, the cardstock, the acetate, the pattern paper, the envelope that I'm going to use, the greetings, all from the kit. So really trying to focus on the kit and show you what all you can create with this amazing kit. I've die cut the greeting twice from the white cardstock and once from that velour cardstock or the velvet cardstock, I guess it's called. I love the velvet cardstock. It cuts like butter, number one, but the texture is just amazing. It's just got that really soft uh, texture to it that is so, so pretty. I'm gonna start gluing these one on top of another. And then I'm going to put an acrylic block on top to help hold that down, hold it flat, kind of smoosh it all together while I work on the rest of the card design. Now, as much as I love this meadow green color from Simon Says Stamp, and I want to use it for everything, I felt like grunging up my frame a little bit. I almost want it to look like this partridge in a pear tree sitting in front of a window. I mean, I know it's gonna be the pear pattern paper back behind it, but I really had envisioned this kind of grungy type of window. And I have not done this technique in such a long time. Do you guys remember, I mean, and this is gonna take me back to my scrapbooking days and I haven't really scrapbooked in, in in a while, uh, in years. But do you remember the direct to paper craze where we were taking our ink pads direct to paper all the time? I've kind of been getting back into that. I also cross stitch and one of my favorite finishers that I follow, uh, Chantal at Chantal's 141 Design, actually uses Tim Holtz Distress Ink Pads on some of her wood pieces that she creates and sells on Etsy. And she uses them to stain her wood, and her wood pieces. And I think it's brilliant. And it really reminded me of our direct to paper techniques. So I am taking black soot, the little ink cube, 
the D Distress Ink Cube, and I am running it back and forth across my paper very, very lightly because I just want it to have that distressed look. Like it's this chippy kind of paint look. I don't know. I, I really just wanted it to be distressy. And I love, love, love the effect. I mean, this frame inspired everything else that you're going to see today. Um, and I feel like it adds a lot of interest and it ties in so beautifully to that pattern paper background. And what I thought was fun was it's completely revisiting a technique that has been around forever. It's just something I haven't personally done in forever. So if you guys haven't done it in forever either, or maybe you are new enough to this card making world that you have never done that, uh, I, I highly recommend just giving it a try. It really is such a fun technique. So now I have all my components. Before I secure anything down to my card, I do want to stamp on my little acetate window, which is one of my all-time favorite things to do. I'm so sorry that my head is in the way. Uh, I have had trouble lining up my greeting, so my head is going to be in the way again. This is one of the sentiments from the Feathered Friends stamp set, the same stamp set that our image comes from. I am going to stamp this on the acetate window with white stays on ink, and I it's my favorite thing. You guys already know this if you follow me, that white stays on on acetate. I can't get enough of it and it's going to just fit perfectly here right underneath our die cut greeting right next to our bird image. So on the back of our textured distressed frame, I'm going to go around the edges with this red line tape from Simon Says Stamp. It's super nice and sticky, so I think it's gonna work really, really well for this. I absolutely love this tape. And we are going to secure our acetate to the back of our window. Once we have that to the back of the window, I can then figure out how to position tidy, the greeting tidings of cheer so that it's centered and it fits within the window space. I kind of thought that it fit in the window space when I was playing around with all of the elements, but I really want to secure or kind of make sure that it's all going to work together perfectly and that'll give me the opportunity to kind of work with my bird, work with the greeting, figure out where it's all gonna go, and then glue it down in place. Nothing is actually gonna be inside this shaker other than the shaker material because the shaker is going to be flat. It's gonna be a flat shaker, meaning we're just gonna wrap some packaging. And yes, I am even using packaging that comes in the kit. Uh, no extra packaging required here. So I'm using my tweezers. I'm just making sure that my greeting is secure with a little liquid adhesive. And in real life, it has that amazing velvet texture. And it looks so, so good. That white velvet texture with the white stays on ink over that dark pattern paper background. Oh, it's gonna look absolutely amazing. And then of course the distressing on that. Also included in the kit, some foam adhesive squares from Simon Says Stamp. Can't get enough of foam adhesive squares. You guys know how much I like my foam. So I am going to cover the back of my bird with foam. And then I'm going to kind of put him down here in the lower left corner. Parts of the image will slightly overlap the word cheer. Not all the way, just a little bit. And then I'm going to trim off anything hanging off the edges because our background is A2 sized. So I don't really want that hanging off. It won't fit in the envelope provided in the kit, but we're not losing anything. It just kind of looks like it's coming in from, peeking in from that left-hand corner. Um, and then I almost forgot to dot my eye. So let's go ahead and layer all three little pieces here. And then the packaging, so that I mentioned a minute ago that I, I even used the packaging from the kit. There is uh, the stamp set. It's nice big piece of packaging. I'm going to trim that down and we are going to wrap our pattern paper in that, creating a little pocket. And then I did just take a sequin mix that I had in my stash at home and I am going to fill the pocket 
with the sequins, something with snowflakes and like white sequins so that it shows up against the dark. I am gonna trim my pattern paper just a teeny tiny little bit smaller. So it's a even a little smaller than scant, um, uh, A2 sized, but that's because I don't want it sticking out further on my card front. I want it to make sure and be right back behind the frame. And then this is that packaging that I am trimming down. Just wanna cut off these little sides here where it's sealed. And then I'm going to use the red line tape again because it's nice and strong to wrap up my shaker. And this is the other side of that pear paper, by the way, which is stunning, so pretty. Craft Consortium has really become one of my favorite pattern paper companies for really unique, really beautiful pattern paper. I, so fun. So I'm gonna start with my two long sides first. I've put the adhesive on my pattern paper. I'm gonna peel it off with my tweezers. And I know that the packaging is super hard to see against my dark work surface, but I'm gonna wrap it around just kind of really tight and I'm gonna flip it and I'm going to wrap it around on the other side. And then I'm going to put some adhesive down along one of the short sides. And I'm going to snip the corners at an angle, not too close to the corner, uh, just a little bit so that when I fold it around, there isn't anything kind of weird sticking out. And now we have a pocket. And I am going to just take this sequin mix and I honestly, I think it's like an old sequin mix that I have. I think Buttons Galore Snowflake is what I, the label I have on it. And I think that's going to be beautiful. It ties into the white of our sentiment. I'm gonna put some red line tape up at the top. I'm gonna snip the two corners at an angle up there. and I'm going to seal my pocket. So that is my shaker. It's basically pattern paper and some sequin mix from my stash. And then we're going to secure our shaker to a card front. And it's slightly smaller than A2 size, but you can see it really fills that space. Just a tiny little white border that's hidden back behind our frame. I'm going to take another layer of red line tape and I'm gonna place it on the back. It's nice and secure tape, so I know it's really going to stick and stay put. And then we're gonna pop that right over the front. Now the final thing that I'm gonna to do to finish off, finish off my card is of course I felt like I needed a little white heart. Why would I not? Uh, I didn't wanna do red. There's not red on my card. I really wanted to stick with the look and the feel of this card design and I felt like white was the way to go but I didn't really wanna go overboard. I want this beautiful shaker window and the sentiment and the image to be the star of the show. That gold envelope included in the kit is the perfect complimentary envelope that matches it so, so nicely. So I'm just gonna take a little Trinity Stamps white jelly heart, and I think this is a medium-sized heart, and we're just going to pop it right there underneath and let that dry. And that is it, you guys. Uh, really beautiful, fun. I think it's a very unique kit. I love that it's a little different than what we've seen before. I know my bird-loving friends are going to love this stamp set. I. It's really, really pretty, and I can't wait to see what you guys create with it. So I'm not done yet. Um, I am adding that black jelly roll pin. I guess I did do it on camera, I forgot, and I bumped my heart, so I need to shift that over, yeah, <laughs> and let that glue dry. But I wanted to create some tags, and I love pre-mades. I absolutely love them, but I love to find ways to dress them up. So this is the old letter background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. It's one of my very favorites. And we are, I'm actually taking some archival ink and frayed burlap. You could just use distress ink too. I just grabbed ink cubes. And then I'm going to take another ink cube. This one is in walnut stain. And I'm gonna do that same direct to paper technique again. And some of these tags, the tags are all in the kit. You get craft, cream, white, and gray. I mean, I more than what you're gonna see me use here. I only did eight. Um, 
And then you get the Tim Holtz ephemera. And it is beautiful for this, but I'm gonna ink the edges of this as well. I want it all to be kind of grungy and dirty. I shouldn't say dirty, but you guys know what I mean, I hope. I just want it to be very grungy and, and vintage. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm gonna layer a lot of these ephemera pieces on the tags, but I love the distressing. I love the little bit of grungy text and then grungy ink around the sides. Again, it's the same direct to paper technique. Super, super simple, but very, very effective. Now I did take a little glossy accents and I'm gonna take some of Tim's uh, tinsel glitter. And I totally smeared my finger through this one. And I'm gonna sprinkle some of my tags with this so that they have a little bit of sparkle. So the things we're doing to dress up premates, we're inking text, direct to paper, layering our ephemera, inking the edges of our ephemera, and in certain places, either popping it up with foam or adding and or adding glitter. So I know that the glitter looks a little messy right now. We're gonna wait for the glue to dry. And then here is my pro tip for the day. Let your glue dry. Don't worry if it's kind if glitter's sticking to everything, because when the glue is dry, take a dry paintbrush and over a trash can or outside, uh, wipe all of that glitter off, and you'll be left with the glitter only on where you want it to be. Uh, I am working on my glass mat today, so it's really easy to clean up with a little rubbing alcohol. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna keep layering up my tags. And this is the part of the video where I said I did speed things up quite a bit. It's gonna be a lot of repetition. So for my tags today, I chose to use all craft and cream. Um, I left the white and the gray. I feel like I would probably do something a little different with those, but and maybe not grunge them up so much, but the craft and the cream really to me felt like I could grunge them up really well. These tags have awesome eyelets in them. And I even covered up the majority of this particular tag. You're gonna see me layer a frame. This uh, like little Christmas, I don't know what it is, songbook or something, or maybe a, a book cover. Um, and then some like little lace trim and some flowers. We're going to use all of these things to make a really kind of unique tag. So I'm just kind of leaving the tag up at the top. Just so I have something to hang it all from. I think these would be so cute hung from like a little mini tree. I think they would be cute strung together so you get some really amazing twine in the tag package. You could string all of these together and make a garland to hang either from a mantle or um, in your craft room or anywhere in your house. I think it would be amazing depending on kind of like your decor and things. But look at all the ephemera you get. I'm just gonna kind of show you, you're gonna get to see a lot of my thought process, a lot of my playing with different little parts and pieces, figuring out what I want to use. Um, just absolutely amazing. I love how the direct to paper really kind of helps dress up pre-mades. It also is very fast to use pre-mades, very, very fast if you're not having to color everything. And the other idea I have for you is you can always take these tags and then pop them onto cards. Um, if you don't need a ton of tags or anything like that, you can stamp to and from on the back and make these gift tags that you tie onto your packages. You guys know I'm kind of your tag girl. I absolutely love tags. I added glitter to the center of the poinsettias. It's super messy, but I promise you guys when it's all dry and I wipe away that excess, it's amazing. Um, I love the shape of this particular tag. I mean, I didn't even bother to stamp my tags super nice. I actually just took my tag and pressed it into the stamp after I inked it because uh, I was doing the quick, easy route. We're, we don't even have time to load up our Misty with our background stamp. I don't, I'm not, I wasn't looking for perfect background stamping. I was looking for that grungy text kind of background. So I'm trying to figure out how to make my little wreath work here. And I love this wreath with the little holiday banner. Very, very simple. I'll add that back in a little bit. I'm gonna remove it so I can add some glitter. 
and this glitter's super fine. And I did use Tim's glitter just because I felt like it had a little bit more of that distress feel to it rather than maybe some of the Prisma glitter or something to that effect. I don't break out the glitter often, but when I do, I make a mess. <laughs> Does everyone else agree with that? <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys, I make a huge mess. So now I, I kind of at this point, I'm playing with things. I'm trying to figure out a, what are the rest of the tags I want to make? What pieces can I combine? Because I, I tend to do this with a, a package of any sort of pre-made. I grab them, I lay everything out, and I do the ones that are like instantly speak to me. But after I did the ones that instantly spoke to me, I found myself going, oh, um, well, now what? Because I, I still want to make more. And how can I... How can I really challenge myself? At this point, it is more of a challenge. And so I kind of left a little of this in so you can see the thought process. And some of the things I've discarded, some of them not because I don't even like it, but just because it didn't work as good as I thought it was going to. I am left with so many ephemera pieces that can be used for other projects later on. And it really is about this point that it's, you know, less is probably more. So I need to kind of tone it back a little bit, stop trying to use everything in the ephemera kit, but definitely just kind of playing around, figuring it all out. And you'll get to see kind of the finished idea. And then I will go ahead, stamp the text for the backgrounds, do the direct to paper technique. Um, and then finish them off either with glitter and then I'm going to thread a little twine through each of these. And I think I almost have everything somewhat how it's going to be. I, You'll notice they're starting to look how I end up finishing them. I really wanted to use that little Scotty dog and I just kind of couldn't figure out what else to use with him. Maybe I'll put him on one of the other um, tags and not do the grungy tag. That would be kind of cute too. And the, the December 25th tag, is it's funny. It's probably ended up being one of my favorites and I literally used one tag and one piece of ephemera, but just grunging it up a little bit really made it super cute and interesting. I think it would be really fun. Oh, another idea, you guys. If you do like an advent countdown calendar, you like to make your own, how fun would these be? You could number all of them. I mean, I've got 24 and 25. You'd have to maybe uh, stamp some numbers on the others, but I do think that that would be a really, really fun idea to do an advent kind of tag thing. Really cute. Okay, I am gonna, I, di I didn't leave any of this slower. It will be fast since it's very much the same. Again, I used archival ink in frayed burlap. For the cream tags, I did ink up the edges with frayed burlap a lot instead of walnut stain, sometimes walnut stain. Really no rhyme or reason to what I do. <laughs> it was more just uh, what looked good at the time and just grunging it all up. And yes, my fingers were a mess. I probably should have went and found some like gloves or something. I did take rubbing alcohol when I was finished or kind of in between, and I would clean up the work surface to eliminate some of the mess. Oh, I love this little layered one here. I think it looks really cute. Um, using more of those foam adhesive squares that come in the kit to pop up the stocking. I love the stocking. I like how it looks kind of stretched out. And then some of the tags, I'm going to thread the twine that's included through and knot it. Some of them, I'm just gonna double the thread over, push it through the hole reinforcer, and then run the ends through and leave them kind of loose. It just really depended. I tore this little piece of ephemera so that it hangs off the end. I thought that added a nice little interesting piece and then I just very lightly inked it up. Loving, loving that one. I noticed I forgot to ink the edges of my tag. I don't even notice it 
until I'm like to this point and I was like, oh, whoops. So I just went through and added a little ink now. No worries. And we're just going to continue. I think I only have, what, one or two tags left to make? Very quick and easy. I will tell you all of these tags were finished in um, an hour, maybe. Uh, the card took way longer. But I did all of these tags very, very quickly. Some of the tags have embossing on them. So if you do this direct to paper technique, the embossed areas are going to pick up the ink a little bit stronger, which I love if you wanna keep the tags kind of as is. A lot of that got covered up with mine, but you can see little peaks of it here and there on the tags, which I think is really fun. So definitely drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys like working with pre-mades. Uh, I do find it super fun. I it really kind of takes me back to the scrapbooking days and I love when Simon includes them in kits um, because I think it's really fun and a great challenge to figure out how to use them and dress them up to really fit my style. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these direct to paper ideas using the Simon Says Stamp limited edition card kit for holiday 2022. The supplies I used to create my projects are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Simon Says Stamp kits that you might be interested in. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. We would love to see you over there as part of our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making or paper crafting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.